Hey everybody, welcome to the show. I'm Kevin Hoy, and I guess this is the future of hunting talk show. We've got a hot topic in our community, in the nation, and it's how to keep our kids safe, right? Um, I've got Clayton Kip here joining me today. And unfortunately, whenever these events happen, it almost instantly goes to the topic of gun control and gun reform, which people that know me, I'm against that. Whether we want this conversation or not, it's coming. Right? This is something that most of the nation, I think, is screaming about. So if we're going to talk about this, I want to make sure that we're talking with the same facts and rules. So that's how we're going to start this series. And again, this has to do the main topic. We're going to put it on the bottom of the screen right here. Uh, it's how to keep our kids safe at school, right? But I want to dismiss this foolish gun control, gun reform, uh, because I don't think it's going to work. So one of the quotes that I hear all the time, especially from the kids now that are rallying, they're upset, I understand that, they should be, um, but we need gun reform and we need to kid, keep our schools fa safe. Um, now I don't know why those are connected. Why do we need gun reform and keeping our schools safe? I think this is a school issue, not a gun issue. What do you say to that, Clay? It's an emotional issue and the emotions are ruling the thought process on this. Right. You don't hear about deaths from other things that exceed the gun deaths. But when there's a school shooting, it's the innocence, right. uh, loss of life, and everybody gets immediately emotional over it. Always tragic, always heartbreaking. Yeah, exactly. Especially with our, our children, right? Nobody wants to see this happen. I mean, as a, as a conservative, right, uh, the first thing when I say, you know, I'm against gun reform is, well, you're, you're a murderer then, you're against, right, the NRA, does not want any more of these school shootings. The NRA supports responsible, safe gun ownership. So those are ridiculous claims to start with. But I wanna, I wanna put some of this on the table, some of the definitions, some of the real numbers about what we're talking about when it comes to gun reform. So background checks is where we wanna stop. That's a reasonable thing that I think people are concerned with. Uh, how easy is it to get a gun? And answer, you're a gun owner, how easy is it? 10 minutes for me. Yep. I have no police record, uh, no DWIs, no nothing in my background. I go in, fill out the paperwork, 10 minutes, unless the computers are down. Right. Uh, you know as well as I do that other people can be an issue. Right. I've uh, been an issue before. I had to wait. They didn't tell me why, but I actually was on delay for a little while, and I've never done anything. I've got no criminal record, but I had to wait one time. and. It, Eventually it passed and it wasn't that big of a deal. So inconvenience wise, it's not bad, but there's... But I don't even have time to get my wallet out when it's right. back. Got you. And, and it, it's a pretty good check, actually. It, it, yes, it is. When it works properly and uh, everything goes according to Hoyle, which obviously did not happen the last time. Right. My son worked in a gun shop and People would come in to buy guns, and some of them were a little questionable. Mm -hmm. And that would go directly to the FBI. And my son has talked directly from the gun shop to the FBI. And one individual that comes to mind was approved. Yeah. But the FBI called them. Right. You know, they were doing their due diligence. Right. Right, we miss that on so many levels, from parentals to the school to the, uh, you know, the healthcare system, state, federal, all the way up through. That kid was screaming for help. That's a tragedy that could have been prevented with existing systems already in place. I think, um, but the background checks, in my opinion, are pretty thorough already. I think they do a, a pretty good job. We're never going to catch them all, right? And again, in Florida, it was a definite bungle. Somebody screwed up there, but. Overall, we do pretty good, I think. Would you agree with that? The system works great until that one time when it doesn't. Right. Well, and again, these lists that we're talking about making, right, for people who are not allowed to have this right, um, the questionable part is who decides who's on that list, and it's the only right that I can think of, the Second Amendment, that's treated like this. Somebody, you know, comes up with a, a list for whatever reason, let's say mental health issues, right? And now we're gonna say anybody that's ever seen a therapist or has had anxiety or depression has a mental health issue, so you're not allowed to have a gun. We're gonna put you on that list. That happens 
with no say from us, right? Yep. And then as an American citizen, we can turn around and petition the government to get that back. But that doesn't happen with any other rights. We don't do that with the First Amendment. We don't do that with the, um, you know, Trey Gowdy just did an awesome skit on this. And I appreciate Representative Gowdy. He does a good job for defending our rights. But I think the background checks, again, they can be a little tighter. But I don't think we have control over the list that we have now. No, there is no control. Right. You know, uh, you find out after it's done. Right, and you know. coordination too, the interagency coordination between the local police all the way up through the FBI, that should be happening. I don't know why this information is not being shared. Um, and again, there's there's other ways, I think, for screening. One of the things that, um, again, I heard on Fox News, right, is uh, Greg Gudfield was talking about when he buys a mattress for the next three months, all he gets is mattress advertisements, right? And every email you send, you get a mattress because these guys, they have algorithms out there that you know, know what we want to buy. There's got to be some sort of an algorithm where we're already logged onto this stuff on Facebook is a great resource, right? If you say, I want to be a school shooter, if you want to say, there's got to be some sort of a, a list that can be compiled that way, don't you think? Well, they use it on terrorists. Yeah. You know, I. I don't like the idea of Big Brother looking over my shoulder every minute, but it's almost come to that. Right. And of course, uh, uh, NSA, with all this metadata they've collected. Right. They know they, everything it, about everybody. Well, they almost. should know who the bad actors are <laughs> by now. They Right. Right. You know. Uh, and, and I don't want, you know, Big Brother either, and that's the problem, you know, people that want to keep our schools safe, but they're against metal detectors because that'll make our kids feel uncomfortable while well, we're talking about the safety of our kids. We're going to get to ideas later, but again, this show here specifically is about gun reform and guns and gun issue. Um, another big thing is definitions. Uh, an assault rifle. Clayton, can you tell me what an assault rifle is? No. A real assault rifle. Let me put it that way. What is, by definition, an assault rifle? The old version of an assault beep, beep. rifle. How's that? <laughs> But this, this, this is a bad one. I own military weapons. Mm -hmm. Military issue weapons. Sure. I, when I they too. were made, they were state-of-the-art assault weaponry. Right. Bolt action, five-shot internal magazine. And you magazine. use them for deer hunting. I, yes, I do. Thank you very much. Right. They were made to be dropped, thrown, slammed into things. That's why I like them. Right. It's morphed. Now, because you have the AR-15, which looks like the M-16 or the M-4. Right. Now, and again, people, we're gun guys, so I know what you're talking about, but the people watching this don't. And we've got to be very clear on this. Um, you know, an M-16, for instance, is a military-grade weapon, and I want to define, I'll answer my own question as far as an assault weapon. An assault weapon has a switch on it, right? This is a weapon of war, weapon of mass destruction. I've heard this this term used for the AR-15, but this weapon of war, an assault rifle, a real assault rifle, has three different switches where you can go from a uh, semi-automatic, which means every time I want to fire a round, I have to pull the trigger, to a three-round burst, where every time I pull the trigger, I send three rounds down range, to a fully automatic, which means I hold the gun, I hold the trigger, and it continuously fires like a machine gun style. So, and to be perfectly clear, those guns are illegal in the United States. They have been for a long time. Uh, it takes a very special permit and a really extensive background check to own one of them. And very large yearly fees to and own very, them. Yes, very, it is expensive to own them. And again, but these are illegal in terms of real assault rifles. Now we're getting into the point, AR-15, right, is defined as a modern sporting rifle, right, which is what it is. Semi-automatic. And an AR, a lot of people think that stands for assault rifle. Do you know what the AR stands for even? Armalite rifle model number 15. Uh, that's right, see I invited the right guest today. Armalite is a company that developed this and we're talking about the stock much more than the rifle. The design of the rifle, it's a, a foam filled carb, uh, fiberglass uh, shell basically and we have a aluminum barrel inside a steel sleeve for accuracy. It's a style and manufacturing AR is a company that's designed the AR-15, and they've been around for a long time. When's 1958. 
Yeah, I was going to say 54. 50s anyway is when the yep. first AR came out. Uh, again, this is what we deer hunt with at the same time. That's one of the concerns is what people say, why do you need a rifle that shoots multiple shots like that? Why do I need a six liter V8 in my truck? Right, a car that goes 100 miles an hour. Why do you need a car I, that goes 100? You know, you don't need it, but you would like to have it. Right. Uh, if you're deer hunting, a lot of people like to be able to come back with a follow-up shot, right? Which is humane for the animal. You put them down, done. Right. A lot of people like to target shoot. A lot of people don't like to spend all day long loading on the range. Right. A and lot of fun. They. Oh yes. Sometimes fun too to much. Shoot. Yeah, it gets expensive too. <laughs> it does. And and again, the problem with the assault rifle term is they've already and they continue to change the definition of that. So a lot of these guns that we grew up on, I started and learned how to shoot on a Ruger 1022, right? Every one of my kids did, well, along with millions of other Americans. By definition now, that's an assault rifle, right? If you want to take it that way, my, my son has a Ruger SR 1022 mm -hmm. with a barrel shroud, right. with a collapsible folding stock. Assault rifle. It's gray. It's not black, it's gray, but it fits with a pistol grip, it fits all those terms. Right, the criteria. So, you know, we're into the problem now. Where where do you walk away from that term? Is a 22 caliber an assault rifle because it looks like one and functions like an AR-15? That's very interesting as the, the fashion statement behind these things. Well, um, that's the term is furniture. It, what kind of furniture does the gun have on it? It, it absolutely is. Uh, I can take my Ruger 1022, which looks like a normal rifle in most people's eyes, and for about 75 bucks, I can make it look really badass. <laughs> can I? Oh, I yes, can make you it can. look exactly like the stuff that we use in the military. And that's what ha what happens. This is where the confusion comes in. An, an AR, the military weapons grade, is a fully automatic assault rifle that our soldiers are using over in Afghanistan. Here. We, it's a different AR. We have a different weapon than that, but somewhere along the lines, a genius in marketing, right, in, in the firearms manufacturing business said, geez, I can make that look just like that really, well, I'm going to say bad rifle, I don't even like that term, but the military style rifle. So this is a fashion statement where the guns have been produced to look this way, but it's basically the same old well, gun. The early ARs were actually marketed as a sporting gun. Right. The early AR-15s. And then because they gained popularity in the military, and the guys came out of the military, this is what they knew. You know, I want to keep in mind here that this isn't really, we're talking about gun reform, gun debate, but this whole topic, this is going to be a series, this is part one, and we're going to get to answers, uh, is about how we keep our kids safe at school. That is the bottom line here. And that's what we want to get to. Unfortunately, gun reform always comes into play. Uh, so we want to talk about that. And again, I want to define, I think your average person out there, um, your average American isn't in tune with guns like we are, doesn't use them every day, maybe doesn't even see a use for them. Hopefully we'll straighten that out for them. But they're concerned, rightfully, right? This is the, a the, horrible thing that's happening. There is a fear and it is not irrational. Right, well, I, and again, I think most of your, your Americans don't want to take away our gun rights. They just want to stop the madness, right? Yep. So I, I think that's a fair statement uh, to say. And while most Americans don't want to do that, they do. They being, I guess, the far left, the political agendas and everything else behind this. Um, the new definition for assault rifle, and I want to get this important, this is exactly what they're trying to take away from us. Uh, and again, this is for the 2017 military assault weapon ban. Um, it calls for the ban of over 200 assault rifle style guns. And now we get into the, the nitty gritty is who determines what the style, what, how do you define military style weapon? Uh, again, over 200 weapons. If it has a detachable magazine, if it has a pistol grip, if it has a forward grip, uh, if it has a folding stock or an adjustable stock, if it has a barrel shroud, this whole thing is shrouded in terms that people don't understand and it's all a hoax. We're being fooled, I think, to think that these things are bad. A barrel shroud goes on the outside of your barrel and it's there so that the user doesn't get burned by the barrel. It looks pretty cool, 
does absolutely nothing for the effectiveness or, or shooting capability of the gun. Or bayonet lugs is another one because we have so many bayonet stabbings in the United <laughs> States that we have to worry about now, right? These are the new categories or the new definitions for assault rifle. And I'm not good with that because now they're not talking about military weapons. They're talking about our everyday guns. Well, they've changed the language without changing the definition or the meaning where it came from. Right. The early Henry rifles, the Golden Boys, old lever action, yeah, had repeater. nothing on the barrel. Yeah. And you're set there and you're cranking them out one at a time and the barrel got hot. So they put a wooden piece on the forearm to protect your hand. The, the barrel sh shroud does the exact same job as that little hunk of wood. Right, and, and if we're gonna go to that extreme, shotguns, pump shotguns, all have barrel shrouds on them, right? Yeah. So wouldn't that, I guess, again, classify, uh, they take a little piece and go a long, long ways. Again, one of the problems here is every time the right hears gun reform, we instantly don't trust, right? And they're after our guns, and then every time the left here's it's like I said, you guys are insane, you're puppets for the NRA and you wanna kill kids. Both are kinda of wrong there. We gotta keep this into perspective. I wanna really look at gun deaths as a whole because again, we're trying to stop school shootings. Um, you know, we wanna keep our kids safe in school. So is this really gonna work if we, if we did this, if we did these uh, bans? We can and should do more, there's no question about that. But overall, I think guns are a non-issue. I think guns are safe. Would you agree with that? There's a lot of people freaking out. Save your mail, right? Listen, hear me out first. Guns are safe, yes or no, do you agree? Yes, they are. Yeah. When used properly, very safe. Right, and if we're looking at the numbers, if we're looking at the actual statistics, then they're incredibly safe. And we can go through them. I mean, right now, it's a hard number to pin down, but the highest I could find is about 32,000 gun deaths a year. Out of those 32,000, 22,000 of them are suicides, which takes us to about 10,000 a year. Uh, now out of that 10,000, how many are law enforcement uh, where they're shooting the bad guys or it's you know a bad guy dying from an armed civilian defending themselves? Issue, yeah. Right, we're talking under 5,000 a year. Again, we can't keep control of our regular list, which is absolutely horrible if you're one of the 5,000 or a family member or connected or especially when it happens in a school. But overall, what an incredible number. But when you consider there's over, last numbers I read were old, there's over 300 million guns in this country. Right. Now if you compare that to the number of cars in this country, with the number of deaths on the road. Yeah, uh, it's insane. It's, no, it's totally. It's yeah, night it, and day. You're, well, you're, and you're we're safer walking around with a gun in your back mass, pocket mass than driving shooters, down the road. Specifically, we're talking less than 300 people in the history of the United States for the mass shooting type things, right? But yeah. again, I don't want to compare. We're talking about gun deaths in general. Hunting, uh, every kind of gun death that you can imagine is the number we're talking about, 5,000 a year. And if you compare that to, let's say, doctors, right, through medical malpractice, kill about 250,000 a year. We kill 700,000 people through abortion every year. And again, that's a whole other hot uh, topic. Yeah, that's a whole other but topic. But there's, there's 150 people every day that die in this country, every single day from opioid overdoses, right? 150 a day. Are we really gonna sit here and say that, you know, guns, guns are a safety issue because I, I don't think they are. We're, we're back to the emotional level of this. Uh, take, take a plane crash. Mm -hmm. Everybody freaks when a jetliner goes down. But you're still safer being up in the air than you are on the ground. Right. But it's the emotional impact of something like this happening. At our schools, I, with our kids. We're back to being called cold and cruel again. Right. Right, yeah. and that's the thing. I, I don't want anybody to misunderstand me when I say only 5,000 deaths, because that's a big deal. We can and should do something. I don't think the answer is gun control is, the, is my main role here, I guess. And we've got great answers coming up in different shows. Uh, and remarkably, out of that 5,000 deaths, less than 3% is actually rifles, right? And I've got some great statistics here. Uh, from the, two, the stats on long arm are so far down on the scale. Right, well we're talking about gun reform to ban assault rifles though, right? So now, again, why do we pass laws? We pass laws to prevent things like this from happening. Is this law, could any law actually prevent this? And based on stats alone, again, we're just talking about our gun safe. 
you know, 2015 for rifles, uh, they took the lives of 252 Americans, which is horrible, don't get me wrong. But compared to knives, we've got almost five times as many at 1,544. And I'll repeat it for everybody. 252 people died from guns, from r rifles, all rifles, and 1,544 died from knives. Bare hands and feet being beat to death, we got 624 people. Again, guns 250. So what an incredibly safe statistic, especially considering all the, the guns that are in this country. Um, knives is another thing. We are just talking about this stabbing, this mass stabbing that happened Murrayville, Pennsylvania, yep. right? 20 kids all at once because a kid went in with, with two knives. We can never protect ourselves from ourselves. Um, my theory is if this kid didn't have a gun or access to an illegal gun, you know, we didn't talk about getting illegal guns. It's very easy, I think, if you're a criminal to get a gun. Oh, no problem. Right? <laughs> if but, you don't have one, steal one. Yeah, well, again, if this kid didn't have a gun, I think he would have built a bomb. And if he didn't have the know-how to build a bomb, he would have used his car, right? And yep. Cain killed Abel with a rock. We're never going to be able to stop each other from yep, each so, other. And uh, there was a knife stabbing in Japan recently, right before that, there was another mass stabbing in China. That's all within the last week. Yeah. You know, when the terrorists in Europe can't get anything else, they get a truck. That's it. Well, for for car, $19 how, an hour, you can go down to Home Depot <laughs> you can, and rent one and drive right down the sidewalk can, in New York City. More and more, you're seeing that all yeah. over the country. And that's the thing. Do we ban cars? Of course not. They're too convenient, right? But yes, cars, and how many, how many kids die from cars every year? And it's not blasted across every news network and talked about for three weeks at a time when it happens. Would a ban actually stop and protect our children? Do you think a, another, no. another gun law would? No, no, I don't one, know. the guns are out there. You can steal a gun, Yeah. but the way the schools are set up, now I haven't been through the doors of Mount Anthony in a few years, but when I was there, there's one, two, three entrances in the courtyard. Mm -hmm. All right. Best of my knowledge, they're still open. Maybe they locked one of the cafeteria during the day and the one over by the uh, art room. Yeah. There's multiple access points. Exactly. Auto shop, yeah. uh, CDC. There's so many ways to get in that building. Yeah. Uh, you don't need a gun. Right. I go in there to do something, I don't need a gun. Right. There's so many other ways out there. But it, you know, just to gain access to the building, that's your first chore. Right. You know, and once you're in there, you can do whatever you want. Yeah. Be well, it a knife or whatever. It's it's not going to stop it until you can secure access to the building. Right. And like I said, we're gonna definitely get we've got a whole bunch of really great I think a lot better ways than gun control that can and will reduce this. Uh but for today, again, we're talking about guns and, and you know the history. Nobody ever hears the good side of guns either, right? Yeah, they never talk about the good guy with a gun. The millions of lives saved, I think, every day at the hands of innocent civilians protecting themselves, right? Uh, the the church down in Al down in yep. Texas. Bad guy with an AR was stopped by a good guy with an AR. Exactly, and that was an AR used for good. It's it stopped to save how many lives. Uh, I think of these two criminals that escaped from Georgia last year, two cop killing criminals, right? On massive manhunt, they hijacked the wrong car and the guy was armed and held them at gunpoint until the cops came and threw them back in jail where they belonged and nobody got killed. There was a good instance with a gun where not even the bad guys, they all, they went back to prison where they belong, right? Yeah. So the good side, and, and again, that's from a self-defense mechanism um, hunting, of course, I'm a hunter. We feed ourselves. We do lots of great things using the gun as a tool, as it's designed for. But how about the world picture? Do you think guns are important for America and the world picture? Yes. We are the only society that's guaranteed the right to own guns. Right. Uh, it kept the Japanese off the shores during World War II. They did. Because that, they knew we had guns. It's my, one of my favorite quotes. We weren't going to come at them with pitchforks. The U.S. will never be invaded because there's a gun behind every blade of grass. And that's profound to think that. 
I mean, Wisconsin, there's enough hunters in Wisconsin the first day of deer season. The largest army in the world goes out to pursue white-tailed deer in Wisconsin every year. Add all the American hunters to that. Right. And we are a formidable force. We absolutely are. So I think in the world picture, it absolutely makes a sense. And another argument that we hear from people is, well, these other countries where they ban guns, you don't have the attacks that they do. That's a, that's a fallacy. That's but not true. England is now the most violent country in Europe. Stabbings, beatings, acid attacks now. Oh, there's a million things. Anytime you, you ban guns, the crime rates go up, that's been proven. Every time, we know that, historic evidence, when you ban guns, crime rates soar. I think Washington, D.C. is one of the best examples of that. Oh, yeah? We know that. These are things that we've already been through and tested. So, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think that's the answer. No, uh, it goes back to an armed society is a polite society. Uh, we have no laws in Vermont. Right. And I've witnessed it. You never know. Right. who has a gun right. and it would surprise you on any given day right. who's walking up and down Main Street. And there's there's not any excess of murders here in Vermont State. In fact, it's the opposite. No. Right? Because no, you don't know. You don't know. Uh, and I always put that, you know, if me and you were going to become criminals tomorrow and we wanted to go to, you know, do we go to stay in Vermont where our men, women and children are all armed and we all know how to use them or do you want to go to Mass where somebody's already dictated that they don't have the right to defend themselves and they can't have a gun. It's a no-brainer. Yep. I'm going to go to Massachusetts. It's just like these schools, and again, that's what we're talking about, school shootings. There's a sign that says this is a gun-free zone. What a perfect place to shoot people. We've got an advertisement. We're putting up signs that this you, is a soft target. You have a, you have a target-rich environment with no defenses. Right. You know, and okay, fine, you know, uh, I'm old. <laughs> but we used to bring guns to school for the gun club, for the rifle club. Right. We'd bring them into the office during deer season and leave them there yeah. for safekeeping. But, you know, er everything's changed now. Removing the gun, which is the threat, won't change it. Right. You know, it right. just changes the means. And we're, we're talking about law, too, which is very important here. I mean, all the things we talked about, getting a gun and the background checks, this is all as a law-abiding citizen. But... How many laws did this kid break in Florida? Do we think another law would stop him? Or how about a thousand laws, right? I, it's ludicrous to think that. He's not going to get a gun through legal method, methods if you're a criminal and you want to kill people. You're going to get it probably from a criminal friend. And if he did listen to the assault weapon ban uh, after not listening to the murder and all the other laws that he's breaking, it makes absolutely no sense that people, if they banned assault rifles tomorrow, I'm going to keep mine and I'll put the, my name on the list right now. Uh, and I'm a, I'm a good guy, right? I, I already told my state rep that uh, they were talking about all these background checks and everything, and you know, for you to borrow a gun from me would require a background check. Right. For me to say to my son, I've had it too old to hunt, too old to shoot, here are my guns, a background check. Yeah, I'm uh, against that. You know, I, t I told her I, I wouldn't comply with that. Yeah, especially when we're talking about a subject, again, that's not really related to the school part, which is the problem at hand. That's what we want to solve, is how to keep our kids safe at school. Well, and gun control or gun reform is just not going to do it. It no, never has. No, it, it becomes a security issue now. Yeah, and we actually, we know this answer. Ironically enough, uh, I don't know, a lot of people probably aren't aware, we had an assault weapons ban, right? Ronald Reagan, we had a 10-year ban, started in 1994. Um, and part of that ban was a comprehensive study where we wanted to look to see if this was effective, what happens when we ban these weapons, and hands down, again, it's not a guess, this is something we've done, we've studied. Uh, the FBI and the Department of Justice came out and literally said it had zero effect. Uh, quote, we saved zero lives by banning this. And if it didn't work in the 90s, I don't think it's going to work today. In fact, I think it fuels more of this. Canada tried their own thing with total gun registration and uh, even ballistics on the guns, I do believe. $3 billion and they solved three cases with it. Right. Over the course of 10 years. Yeah. All this effort for nothing. Right. 
well, Australia. It cost tens of millions to, to collect their guns and Scrap their murder rates and everything went through the roof. They skyrocketed after they went through there. And again, if you want to talk about serious violence and death and destruction, uh, when we're talking about reclaiming, right, seizing guns from the American public, I don't, I don't think that's going to lead to more peace. I think that leads in the opposite direction. I think that's a big enough subject to talk about civil war even, right? Uh, yeah, there'd be a lot of, there'd be a lot, lot, lot of people that won't put up There'd be a lot that. of people. So uh, we're passing laws that will not be effective, that we know won't be effective, that affect well, a little tiny demographic and could yeah. cause more damage than they do harm. What you're getting is knee-jerk, feel-good reactions and I think there's something like 290 federal gun laws on the books right now. Right. So how much farther do you take this? Let's start enforcing them to start with and prosecuting to a full you know, if, uh, if If you have all these laws that you don't enforce and you still have a problem and you refuse to enforce the laws, then your only other option would be confiscation. Right. Which doesn't work either. Yeah, and it, it wouldn't work in America. The guns are here and we're not going to get rid of them. Like well, I said, I'm a good guy and I'm keeping mine. I know the bad guys are going to keep theirs. Part, That's part why of I'm keeping mine. To be fair, we live in a, a crazy pagan society right now. There's a lot of crazy people out there and I'm okay with background checks. I've already conceded, I think, enough of my rights and I think we already have reasonable gun control and now it's down to actually enforcing them and doing something. We are out of time, Clayton. And again, for everybody watching, uh, this is really about schools and keeping our schools safe, but it always starts with gun control. So I wanna get the facts on the table about that. We're gonna have one more show about guns uh, before we get into real ideas. So stay tuned, we got some good ones for you. Clayton, I appreciate you coming, buddy. Hey, Thanks. pleasure. And everybody else, I appreciate you guys coming. Thanks for watching. I hope you tune in for the rest of it.